Hi, in this video I'm going to give a sequence-based proof slash explanation for Euclid's algorithm. Uh, this style of proof avoids having to explicitly consider a recursion. So we're going to start out with a proposition that if k, uh, an integer k is a common divisor of integers a and b, that directly implies that k is also a common divisor of a, b, and a minus b. Uh, so let's prove this proposition. So if we represent k as a column, um, we know that a, the integer a, is some multiple of these columns. So we take an arbitrary, we take an arbitrary number of the columns, and uh, we let that be a, and then we take another arbitrary number of columns, and we let uh, that be b. Now we can see that the number a minus b has to also be a multiple of k because we're simply taking a number that is a multiple of k and we're subtracting a smaller multiple of k. So we're going to end up with a multiple of k. Now this proposition proves the following proposition, which is that the greatest common divisor of a and b equals the greatest common divisor of b and a minus b. This is simply because every common divisor of a and b is also a common divisor of b and a minus b. So we can directly use this theorem to demonstrate why Euclid's algorithm works. So let's define Euclid's algorithm as computing the following integer sequence. So the first element in the sequence is the input x. The second element in the sequence is the input y. And the nth element is sn minus 2 minus some multiple of sn minus 1, where the multiple is chosen such that sn is greater than or equal to 0 and is strictly less than sn minus 1. Another way of saying this is that sn is equivalent to the remainder of sn minus 2 divided by sn minus 1. And another way of saying this is that sn equals sn minus 2 mod sn minus 1. We're going to use the first formulation for sn because we can directly apply the above theorem. If we let sn minus 2 correspond to a, sn minus 1 correspond to b, and sn correspond to a minus b, then we've directly shown that for all elements in the sequence computed by the Euclidean algorithm, the greatest common divisor of sn minus 2 comma sn minus 1 is equal to the greatest common divisor of sn minus 1 comma sn. So in other words, the Euclidean sequence preserves pairwise greatest common divisor. So to finish the proof, we just need two more propositions. We need the proposition that the sequence will always end at some integer sk comma 0. This is the case because, as we said, we always choose m sub n such that sn is strictly decreasing and is always greater than or equal to 0. So a strictly decreasing integer sequence that is always greater than or less than or equal to 0 must at some point become 0. The final proposition we need is that the greatest common divisor of any integer x in 0 is equal to x. That is because Every integer divides 0, therefore the greatest common divisor of any integer in 0 is the integer itself. So we've shown that we're computing a sequence uh, x comma y comma s1 uh, where, we're where we're guaranteed to end at some integer sk comma 0. We know that the greatest common divisor of sk comma 0 is sk. And we also know that the greatest common divisor of a and b must equal the greatest common divisor of s, k, and 0. Thus, one way of interpreting Euclid's algorithm is that it computes an integer sequence that preserves pairwise greatest common divisor and is guaranteed to terminate at 0. Thanks for supporting these videos, and see you next time.